Russia can launch nuclear strike against any NATO country, member of Duma made scandalous statement. Russia can launch a nuclear strike against any NATO country and not only, said Andrei Katapolov, chairman of the Russian State Duma Defense Committee. Technically, based on our capabilities, we can strike any country, both NATO and non-NATO, and any other country at all. But it is on what ground we will make such decisions that we will see based on the specific situation. Kartapolov told the parliamentary newspaper, they think they can play with us indefinitely. No, they can't. Remember, as it was said in the wonderful Soviet film, the meeting place cannot be changed. Don't be afraid, we won't stab you painfully. One second and you're already in heaven. And it will be the same here. Kartapolov concluded, threats against the West from Moscow have been heard since the first day of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine. In particular, the official representative of the Russian Foreign Ministry, Maria Zakharova, previously warned that arms supplies to Kyiv are bringing NATO closer to the dangerous point of a direct military clash with Russia. Recently, President Vladimir Putin said at a meeting with the heads of world news agencies that Russia can supply its long-range weapons to those regions of the world from which it will be possible to deliver sensitive blows to countries supplying weapons to Ukraine. We are thinking about the fact that if someone considers it possible to supply such weapons to a combat zone to strike our territory and create problems for us, then why do we not have the right to supply our weapons of the same class to those regions of the world where strikes will be carried out on sensitive targets on those countries that do this against Russia? He asked. At the same time, Putin emphasized that the answer may be asymmetrical. We will think about it, the head of state added. Currently, 14 states have allowed Ukraine to use weapons supplied by them against military targets on Russian territory. These are the USA, Germany, Canada, Denmark, France, Great Britain, the Netherlands, Poland, Sweden, Finland, Czech Republic, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. The decision was made in connection with another escalation of the conflict on the part of Russia, which has increased the shelling of critical infrastructure in Ukraine and launched an offensive in the Kharkiv region. The armed forces of Ukraine may receive more than 60 American-made F-16 fighter bombers from Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway this summer. This was reported by the newspaper Politico. According to the sources of the publication, Kiev demands that Washington and European countries accelerate the training program for Ukrainian pilots for the combat use of F-16 fighters. The Ukrainian authorities believe that the current pace does not allow the number of military personnel required for the armed forces to be trained. Ukraine has already notified the United States that it can send 30 pilots who are ready to immediately begin training on American territory. However, the Washington administration informed Kiev that there were not enough available places at the Arizona Air Base to receive more than 12 military personnel from Ukraine for training. At the same time, as the newspaper notes, American lawmakers are asking the executive branch to give priority attention to this issue and accept several more Ukrainian pilots for training. Nevertheless, the American government informed Ukraine that military personnel from other countries are also waiting for the opportunity to undergo training at the airbase, Washington cannot violate its obligations to them. According to the U.S. Air Force, a total of 12 Ukrainian pilots will be trained at the Arizona Air Base by the end of September. In addition to the United States, the training center in Denmark also has limited facilities and is preparing to close in November. The third training center for Ukrainian pilots, which is located in Romania, has not yet been launched. By the end of this year, it is expected to complete the training of 20 Ukrainian pilots out of 40 needed to control the F-16 squadron, consisting of 20 aircraft, Politico notes. According to the publication, with the current pace of training, Ukraine will not have enough pilots for a full-fledged squadron until the end of 2025. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said that the United States will replace Ukrainian leader Vladimir Zelensky after spring 2025. Putin made the remarks while addressing a meeting with the heads of international news agencies. The law has to be passed and certain steps have to be taken. Now we are in June 2024, and in order to do this, I feel, it will take a year, until the spring, until the beginning of next year at the very least, he will be tolerated. When he is done, they will say, 
goodbye, Putin said. The Russian leader stressed that the West already has a few candidates for the post of Ukraine's president, adding that Zelensky's presidential term can be viewed as an attempt to seize power in accordance with the country's criminal code. Commenting on Zelensky's presidential term, Putin said, there is a law that defines the martial law status. It says that his powers are transferred to the parliament, and that presidential elections are not held as long as the martial law is in force. But it does not say that presidential powers should be extended. There is also Article 109 of Ukraine's criminal code, which says that this should be treated as seizure of power, Putin added. It should be noted that Zelensky will meet US President Joe Biden in France next week to commemorate the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Biden is also expected to meet with Zelensky during the G7 in Italy next week, according to White House National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. The two countries' leaders last met in December last year to make a plea for military support for Ukraine. Biden in April signed a bill providing over $60 billion in aid for military aid to Ukraine after several months of delay.